Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. This time, Hellraiser, everything you needed to know about female Pinhead. The new Hellraiser movie has introduced female Pinhead, and some of the fans will be familiar with such an event from the comic books. While Pinhead was actually played by a man in previous movie adaptations, this particular story arc, written by Clive Barker himself, actually explored the origins of a female Pinhead, which is none other than Kirsty Cotton. The protagonist of the original movie is shown undergoing a transformation to become the new Hell Lord, and the overall narrative is a mouth-watering prospect for the Hellraiser fans. In this video, we'll dive into the depths of the comic book and bring you everything there is to know about the origins of this unforgettable female pinhead and the aftermath of her transformation. Before we get into the explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Exploring the comic book origin, a brief prelude. Clive Barker begins the story in typical Hellraiser fashion with an appropriately shocking prelude. We're witnessing the evacuation of the Northgate Penitentiary, and while the prisoners are being transferred, the last man on death row is taken to the electric chair. The execution is being carried out by a priest, and the victim claims to be innocent of the crimes that he's been accused of. It is revealed that the man was charged for strangling children, and the priest offers him one last chance of retribution. He hands over a puzzle box, which is none other than the lament configuration, and the priest claims that solving it might just be his last hope. The man on death row tries his luck, and hears the puzzle box click as he solves it. Suddenly, he's numbed by extreme pain, and Pinhead, the leader of the Cenobites and the Hell Priest, makes his presence felt. However, the prisoner on death row is not the only victim. Pinhead strikes down the priest with his hooked chains that leave multiple stab wounds all over his body. He walks around the hall rooms of the penitentiary in agony, and Pinhead's torture continues as the priest prays in vain for mercy and salvation. The story then takes us to the farms of Nebraska, where a helpless young girl is unfortunate enough to solve the puzzle box. She's in for a nasty surprise as the Cenobites arrive alongside Pinhead. However, this time as Pinhead does the needful, delivering the unthinkable torture to the poor soul, he starts to wonder about the futility of the whole process. He makes it clear that the years of torturing and slaying victims have taken the fun out of things. There are no new mutilations to carry out, no innovative tricks of the flesh to employ, and it seems like Pinhead is starting to get tired of the monotony in his life. He wonders whom he has actually served all these years, and he states that it's time for him to explore something new and greater. The pages of the comic book give some extremely graphic details of the hellish realm as Pinhead seeks an audience with Leviathan. Pinhead conveys to the Leviathan's mouthpiece that he seeks to become a human again. He's ridiculed for his strange demand because the creatures of torture and pain consider human life to be damnation. But the Hell Priest has made up his mind. He wants a new experience, even if it comes at the cost of risking his position. At this point, we get the first glimpse of Kirsty Cotton. She's trying to bury the trauma of her past life and starting afresh. She is shown painting something, and her partner surprises her from behind. He proposes, but Kirsty makes it clear that she's yet to get rid of her past baggage. She promises him all her love as they indulge in a passionate moment, but she still requires some time to become officially attached with someone. The man is about to be gone for a few days to deliver his speech at a conference, and it seems like Kirsty Cotton has some old business to take care of. Besides, when we finally get to see what she was painting all along, it turns out to be a giant portrait of Pinhead, a Cenobite leader responsible for all her troubles and losses. Various story arcs play out in the comic book, but we'll focus ourselves with Kirsty Cotton and how she transforms into the female Pinhead. Her struggles with Pinhead continue, and a twist of fate takes away all her close friends and even her lover Edgar from her life. She is in pain after suffering such a severe loss, and she knows only she can fix it all. She is determined to get her revenge, and Pinhead is only too eager for them to interchange lives. Can she make a difference if she becomes the Hell Priest? The Transformation of Kirsty Cotton into the Female Hell Priest Pinhead and Kirsty Cotton are finally face to face in the depths of the hellish realm. Pinhead calls out to her for the process to begin, the insanely painful and morbid process of transformation. Kirsty Cotton sits in a chair as Pinhead hacks away at her body. Blood oozes out as she winces in pain, but the wounds are not intended to kill her, but to change her formation. It is now her turn as Pinhead sits in the chair, and Kirsty begins the process of pulling out the pins from his head. Blood gushes out as Pinhead endures the extreme pain, all because he seeks redemption. 
When Kirsty asks what happens next, Pinhead summons the tentacles that rip his Cenobite robes to continue his transformation process. Kirsty gets rid of her humanly attire as well and prepares for the life ahead to embrace hell. Now, Pinhead doesn't have his signature pins or his familiar robe, and he advises Kirsty to savor the pain, because it will be the last of her sensations. Just as he says so, the tentacles stab Kirsty with multiple pins in her head and face. She is dressed in a new uniform that formalizes her position as the new Hell Priestess. Instead of the previous black leather dress, she is seen in a white robe. Pinhead is surprised to see bits and pieces of Hell flying around him as Kirsty claims to have a new approach in dealing with things. Pinhead, who is now Elliot Spencer, is in for another agonizing treatment from the tentacles, which latch onto him with the bits of flesh and body parts. He now has the sensations of a human, and he's confused about what is happening to him. Evidently, it was not part of his plan, or was it? Kirsty Cotton exclaims how powerful she feels with all the pins embedded in her, and she seems to be returning humanity to Elliot Spencer. She doesn't have the same outlook as the previous Pinhead, and unlike Elliot Spencer, she doesn't require subjects as a ruler. Instead, she's keen to be with her friends and loved ones, for whom she embraced the ultimate sacrifice. Pinhead claims that such ideals will float away into thin air as the last bits of her humanity are stripped. Kirsty, however, is not too bothered by these threats, and she claims victory over Pinhead after having destroyed the puzzle box and saving her friends. She truly believes that she has defeated the evil mind of Pinhead, but she has no idea that she was only playing to his tunes so far. His laughs echo through the halls of hell, and he tells Kirsty about how she was completely unaware of the consequences if she won. Elliot Spencer might have his humanity back, but his evil mind continues to exist even in his human form. He knew all along what Kirsty Cotton would be in for, but he never revealed it until it was too late. To her horror, Kirsty watches her friends and loved ones emerge from the stone creation chambers of Cenobites. They have all taken monstrous forms with their unique mutilations, and her lover probably endured the worst of all. They all stand in a skinless, fanged, demonic form, and Kirsty is shocked to find them in this condition. She certainly didn't take up the position of the Hell Priest to witness this, and she apologizes to her lover Edgar for failing him. Edgar, now in his monstrous form, remarks that the present situation is better than their marriage, because even death cannot do them apart. Meanwhile, Pinhead claims to be released by Kirsty as was promised before. Kirsty, who is pained by what she has just witnessed, orders the Harrowers to tear apart his soul. These demonic versions of the ones that Kirsty cared for rip apart the physical form of Elliot Spencer. His guts are spilled all over the floor, and horrifying mutilations tear through his body. The next scene takes you to the old house of Kirsty Cotton. A cleaning service seems to be taking place here, and two men who are talking about the creepy history of the house walk inside to clean the premises. When one of them walks into the attic, he finds a blooded man. It is none other than Captain Elliot Spencer, who still has the pin marks all over his face and head. He is covered in blood, but he seems fine, much to the shock of the man who witnesses it all. What happens after the transformation? Immediately after narrating the terrifying transformation story of Kirsty Cotton and Pinhead, the narrative takes a step back to explore what happened prior to the whole process. We see Pinhead preparing for battle against the rebels, and he's not at all worried about the great numbers of the rebellious demons in hell. He rides into battle on a horse, with his scythe pointing out, and he hacks and cuts through the enemy lines. The rebellious damned souls are put in their place, but not before they put up a fierce fight. Pinhead's horse is killed in battle, and so are many other Cenobites who fall in battle. Seeing Pinhead on the ground, the leader of the rebels tries to get the better of him. However, Pinhead is far too skilled and kills him along with his fellow fighters. But just before his death, the leader tries to appeal to the latent conscience of Pinhead. He states how he used to be Elliot Spencer's lieutenant in the war, and how Captain Elliot Spencer has forgotten all about the actual reasons behind seeking the puzzle box. Apparently, the goal was never to swim in the depths of hell, and Pinhead is moved for a slight second by these words. That doesn't stop him from killing the rebel, but somewhere it strikes a chord inside his evil heart. We come back to the present day, where Elliot Spencer is in his human form. He is seen in bed with a woman, and a brief glimpse of the city looks like it's Paris. As the woman in bed leaves, another enters, and it's none other than Tiffany, Kirsty Cotton's adopted daughter and one of the Harrowers. It seems like Elliot is struggling with his memory, but he does get a few flashbacks from his life in hell. She takes him to Theo, and they discuss about how Le Marchand devices keep popping up even as they destroy one after another. Elliot reveals that they were simply lying dormant all these years, and now that the power from the other devices has shifted, they're back to replace them. There is no exact number for the devices Le Marchand made, and the number could be as high as thousands. 
Tiffany demands to know the number from Elliot, but he simply states that he wouldn't reveal it, even if he knew. Tiffany maintains that if he wants help from them, then Elliot would have to help them back. For some unknown reason, Theo had brought a beheaded crow in a bowl of its blood. When the dark forces are near, the dead crow will start stirring. Meanwhile, we see that Elliot is facing quite an existential crisis. He walks around the streets of Paris and even heads to a church for a while. Later that night, Tiffany has her encounter with the Dark Forces. She witnesses the most depressing sight ever as she watches tortured souls mutilated beyond mutilation. However, they are all alive and by some insane drive, they are fornicating in their mutilated forms. Tiffany tries to run from this, but she runs straight into one of them. Just as you start to think that it's all over for Tiffany, you hear the voice of female Pinhead at a distance. The transformed Kirsty Cotton remarks at a distance that she is all hers. She remarks how she has missed Tiffany all this while, and she makes Tiffany observe the depths of the hellish realm and its demented creatures. She watches a place called the Pit, where flames engulf thousands of tortured bodies struggling with the extreme levels of pain. Kirsty Cotton, or should we say female Pinhead, remarks that the Pit is the place for sinners after their death. Tiffany is bewildered and in shock, and female Pinhead might just be losing control over the remains of her humanity because she considers this morbidity to be beautiful. On the other hand, Elliot Spencer is seen with a therapist, trying to put together the pieces of his life that he can't remember. The therapist pleads with him to uncover the locked domains of his mind, and the next scene takes us to female Pinhead showing Tiffany around. Tiffany is understandably shaken by the nightmarish stuff that she has to witness. We soon observe an unlucky soul who completed the puzzle box. He is greeted by female Pinhead and the other Cenobites and gets the treatment that is reserved for those who summon them. Kirsty Cotton explains to Tiffany how the system in this hellish realm actually works for the better, and she's proud to be the guard who oversees things in this hell. The interaction between Tiffany and Kirsty Cotton also reveals that Elliot Spencer was recovered from a mental asylum. Tiffany tells her about how they've been trying to get rid of all the puzzle boxes and how they brought in Elliot to help them in this task. She also infers why Elliot could be so important. After all, he's the first one in history who managed to break free from his duties as an agent of hell. Female Pinhead offers a little help for Tiffany's cause and the terrifying memories rush back to Elliot Spencer, which is a bit too extreme for his human form to handle. The ordeal continues. A small aircraft is seen flying over a forest. It's carrying something secretive in a crate. Suddenly, the pilots are shocked to realize that they're running low on fuel and the plane crashes shortly thereafter in the middle of a group of tribals. As the plane goes up in flames, the tribals probably find and solve the puzzle box in the ruins. It summons the Cenobite army with female Pinhead leading the charge, but this time she does something different. She decides to pardon the innocent tribals because it is not their fault in the first place. Such actions will have consequences, and her minions in hell aren't pleased with her disobeying the laws. Meanwhile, Tiffany and the other harrowers rejoice after learning that they destroyed the last puzzle box in India. Their travels will take them to India next because Elliot now remembers all about his past life. India was his last known location, and he found himself there during the events of the war. He was a soldier fighting the war, and after an ambush killed most of his men, he journeyed with the survivors to find safety. Suddenly, he witnessed a disturbing sight of people brutalized and hanged, and somehow his twisted mind found beauty and art in this chaos. It was his descent into the depths of hell, and now the team must find the last puzzle box in India. They reach an old house served by Elliot's memories, and back in hell, the Cenobites discuss how to stop him before it is too late. Female Pinhead decides to take her chances by solving the puzzle box in hell, and on the other hand, Elliot and the other members step into the house. Chains and hooks still adorn the rooms, and there are bloodstains on the floor. Tiffany decides that she would be the one to destroy the puzzle box there. While all this is happening in India, female Pinhead is greeted by the outline of a hell priest who appears before her after she solves the puzzle box. It tries to convince her that she must prepare for the worst possible punishment for disobeying and for listening to the beast within her. Meanwhile, an ungodly entity speaks to Elliot and tells him how his life has been no less than a miracle. We get to know that even in his human form, Elliot seeks the destruction of humanity. Female Pinhead finds out that the fate of heaven and earth rest on her, and the morbid shadow of the Hell Priest appearing before her is simply a shred of her own consciousness. The ungodly entity asks Elliot to be proud of his deeds, and we see his skin withering away as the mysterious entity commands him to die alone. But all of a sudden, it is back to where it began. Tiffany brings down the hammer to destroy the puzzle box, and a bright light covers female Pinhead and her fellow warriors in Hell. Kirsty Cotton follows the trail of the light, and the Cenobite horde follow her. 
they find out that the skies of hell have opened up and the bodies and tortured souls are now pouring out. Haunting Realization At this point, Tiffany realizes that they were simply playing to Elliot's plans all this while. He exclaims that he wasn't the one to open the gates of hell, but it was Tiffany who smashed the box. One of the harrowers strikes Elliot with a spade on his face, but he seems unperturbed by the impact. Tiffany and the others watch in awe as creatures and tortured souls from the hellish realm enter the land of the living. Elliot Spencer thanks them for their continued loyalty and reveals that his goal was never to aspire for heaven. Female Pinhead appears and tries to stop Elliot, but it turns out that he is still extremely powerful even though he exists in human form. When Kirsty is punched away, her lover Edgar tries to fight Elliot, but the latter simply rips him in half as Kirsty watches helplessly. Tiffany and Kirsty try to fight the skinless humanoid creatures of hell, but there are simply too many of them. The harrowers fail to keep them away and they leave with Kirsty, even as she screams for Tiffany, who is left behind. They take refuge in the labyrinth because the creatures of hell wouldn't dare to follow them there. Tiffany and her fellow companions learn the hard way that truly damned and evil souls like Elliot Spencer can never be trusted. Back on Earth, he commands the creatures of Hell, who treat him as someone no less than a god himself. As he grows stronger by the second, female Pinhead gets an unexpected help in the labyrinth from the female Cenobite. It's revealed that Elliot Spencer might have gained immortality, and clearly it will be an extremely difficult task to control his evil at this point. He spreads a wave of destruction across the world, killing thousands and endangering all human life. Can Elliot Spencer be stopped? The Earth's government seek desperate measures to control the rapid destruction by some unknown force and Elliot Spencer continues to gather more power. He is almost godlike in terms of power and Kirsty Cotton is the only hope to stop him. She's seen pulling out the pins from her head and gets back to her human form searching for answers from within. As the world sits on the brink of nuclear war, Kirsty Cotton gets some crucial answers to solve the problem. Or does she? As it turns out, this time Leviathan tricked her. As he opened the box and Kirsty to Earth, it gave him the opportunity to escape Hell. The final piece of the puzzle still exists, and the key lies with Priscilla Spencer, the product of Elliot's unholy union. Kirsty Cotton appeals to him to act for his bloodline's sake, and suddenly it is all over. Probably the biggest strength of Elliot was not having anyone to hold him back, and now it was not the case anymore. Worldwide destruction is averted, and it's all back to square one, where it all began. Female Pinhead in the new movie Jamie Clayton starred as female Pinhead in the new Hellraiser movie and she did a mightily fine job, considering the fact that she was stepping into the shoes of a legend like Doug Bradley. However, the movie doesn't shed much light on her origin story, which makes it impossible for us to know if this is a nod to the comic book story arc. Is she Kirsty Cotton or is she just another creature from Hell? The answers aren't here yet. However, there is no denying the fact that the new female Pinhead did everything in her capacity to spook the audiences. She had the most badass lines, and her performance was among the best in the movie. We would love to know more about her backstory in the projects to follow. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on Female Pinhead and her bizarre comic book story arc. We feel that the storyline has enough gravity to be made into a movie, and with all the twists and turns, it would certainly be a treat for the Hellraiser fans. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.